So I've seen some pretty remarkable map animations like this and this one. But what takes your GeoLayers maps from looking like this to looking like this? For some reason, when I look at GeoLayers videos on YouTube, I only find basic stuff like this. So why do I see people paying hundreds of dollars on courses when making beautiful maps is easier than it seems? In this video and series, I'm going to show you a few ways to make your map stand out from everyone else. For example, most people think there's only one way to outline borders, but I'm going to show you a unique way to do it using expressions. And if you haven't used expressions before, don't worry because I'm going to make it super simple. And I'll also leave them in the description so you can copy and paste it into your own project. And usually I see people make routes like this by hand because a typical Reputo won't work in this situation. And since this is something you have to do a lot, I'm going to show you a faster way to do it that would literally save you hours. And finally, I want to show you a really simple thing I see people like Vox and Johnny Harris get wrong all the time. Once you see this, this is something you can never unsee. Uh, the first thing we want to do is create our map comp. So I've already got one created, but you're not going to have any. I'm here on a new composition. I'm just going to name this map as uh, something like tutorial map and I'm just gonna leave it at 25 FPS and 1920 by 1280 and I've already created a custom map for this desert color in map box so it should be here somewhere so I'm not seeing it in here so I'm just gonna go ahead and be import it so if you control click this button up here you can just paste in your link okay so now it's loaded in and this is indeed my map comp I'm just gonna go ahead and create it now okay so it's created here and the first thing I want to do is position our map to where we actually want our animation to be and we're gonna do this little area of Yemen uh, this little river area here which acts as your choke point so the first thing i want to show you how to do is go ahead and do those borders that you see uh, a lot of times johnny Hurst would do these or you see these in box videos as well um so the way we do it is a little interesting so let me go ahead and get into it i'm going to come up here and grab our landmass of yemen and just download that into our browser view we need to come in here and create a custom style for this so just come up here and click the style button and uh, click the plus right here and just create a custom style so i'm going to turn on the stroke and fill for this custom style and we're just going to call this something like border so you just leave everything else the same and go ahead and hit apply so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit more here, just so I can see everything a little bit better. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this in our composition. Okay, so now it's drawn in my composition here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fill off. So we're just left with this border. And now we're going to add our first ex expression. Essentially, what we're going to do is make this an inner stroke. And then we're going to duplicate that inner stroke each time, expanding it just a little bit. So the way we could do that is we could come add. And we're going to do an offset paths. And we have our stroke right here for Yemen. I'm going to come into the offset paths. And I'm going to hit Alt to create an expression. And we're just going to do a really simple expression. We're going to take the expression pip whip and pip whip dips to the stroke width. And then we're just going to come in here and do divide by negative 2. And that's going to put our stroke on the inside. So you can see it changed just a little bit. Okay, so you can see that gave it an inner stroke. Um, it does look like it's not completely on our country. But that's just because we haven't finalized our map comp yet. And the shape layer is Simplified. So now that we've got this, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 2 and I'm going to come up with like an off black color, just something super uh, light between black and white. And I'm just going to duplicate this and go ahead and bring this up now. And I'm going to set this to a yellow color. So I don't want to make this one too thick. I think like that's good. And I'm going to duplicate it one more time. And this one's going to be a lighter yellow color and I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. Okay, so I want to bring both of these under our black so our black sits on top. And then I want to be 3 under 2. So our dark color is on top of our light color. And I think it's looking pretty good. I'm just going to zoom in so it's a little bit easier to see. So I am going to add some texture to this and that's going to make our colors look a little bit better and everything's just going to look more cohesive so i have this grunge texture i'm going to go ahead and bring in and you can see it kind of has like a half tone uh, dotted texture going all across the image and so it's going to give our map just a little bit more realism so i actually want this to be inverted so i'm just going to go ahead and drag an invert effect and this way when we apply multiply it doesn't mess with our image colors too much i'm actually going to set this to overlay okay so i think that's looking pretty good and you can see it, it kind of darkens our colors here and just makes them look a little bit nicer so i'm going to go ahead and actually keyframe our animation now i do want to come over here and just have a little bit of a tilt uh something like this so i'm going to go ahead and set a keyframe for that and i'm going to select these keyframes and just bring them out and i actually want to start up so let me just go up with it something about right here so something about like this and since we're starting to have a lot going on in our composition, I'm going to come to my preview window and I'm going to set my skip to be something like 2 and it's going to let us render this a lot faster. I'm also going to go ahead and bring my quality down. Okay, so I think that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the same layer process for the other two countries surrounding this. Okay, so I went ahead and did that and I'm also just going to adjust my map comp a little bit. So I do want to be zoomed in just a little bit more. So something like this is looking pretty good to me. So real quick, I'm just going to add in my text. So I'm going to really quickly set mine to an off black color. And uh, what I like to do in GeoLows is bring this uh, vertical width up a lot. So I found something like 200 or even, even more than that, like 
uh, say 500 for example looks pretty good then let's go ahead and scale this up so it's easy to read and to actually get this to stick to the country we want to make it a 3d lower and once it's a 3d lower we can just go ahead and parent it to our uh, map anchor and i'm going to come in here and zero out everything on the rotation and then just reposition it how i want it so something like this i think is pretty good i'm going to bring this up as well we we'll go ahead and make this a little bigger just by changing the size here okay so now that's going to actually move with our map comp so if we come out here we can see it's still stuck to that country and for me i'm just going to have this fade in so i'm going to start at zero and then just have it come up to 100. The next thing I want to show you is how to do these circles that are animated coming through this choke point. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide everything that we don't need just so we can improve our window times just a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and take our pen tool and we're just going to draw out a shape of how we want our ships to go. So you can do this as complex or as simple as you want. For me, I'm just going to make them come around this island and right through this here. And I'm just holding my left mouse button down and clicking to get these shapes with my pen tool. Okay, so after you have the shape how you want it, and come into this contents, you want to make sure you have your stroke on. I'm going to do something like probably uh, 30. So the way we're actually going to do this is with dashes. So come under your dash settings and just hit the plus on this. It's going to give you a dash and offset. Set your dash to zero. And if you hit plus one more time, you're going to get a gap. And this gap is what's going to create all circles. So before we do anything with that, we want to come into where it says line cap right here. And we want to change this to round. And now if we bring our gap up, we can see we're getting these circles. And you want to spread these out just a little bit. I think this is pretty good. And now what this is going to let us do is actually animate this offset. That's how we can kind of get these movements going back and forth. So I'm just going to set my offset from zero at this point. Bring it back just a little bit and come all the way to the end of my composition and just bring this up. I'm going to bring it down because I want them to go the other way. So I think it's looking pretty good. So now I went ahead and turned everything back on just so we can see what this is going to look like. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure Yemen and my moving dots are both under my texture. And I'm going to come into the moving dots and I'm going to give these a Gaussian blur. So it's going to make them look a little smudgy instead of su super perfect circles. And you also want to make sure you have motion blur turned on for this. And you can add as many or as few of these as you want. I'm just going to have one path for now, but you can have ships coming the other way too if you wanted. So now before I show you what everybody does wrong, I'm going to show you how to take this map comp to the next level and make it look really clean and polished. So the first thing I want to do is take a levels effect. I'm going to add that to the map comp all the way at the bottom. And I'm just going to barely tweak this. I want to bring this up. And I'm going to come all the way down here and bring this down. And I'm going to go ahead and finalize this just one frame by holding control and clicking finalize. And that's going to give us a high quality image we can see. Okay, so that's done. And I'm just going to adjust this a little bit until I get it to highlight it. Very subtle, but this is going to make our map comp just look a lot better. And I'm actually going to bring this yellow down just a little bit. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is use a hue and saturation on this. And once again, I'm just going to bring this up to something like maybe 20 or something like that. So you can see that's giving us more, more color in that. So if we go without our levels or without our saturation, this is how it's looking. And then once we flip both of these back on, you can see we're just having a little bit more detail. Okay, so next I'm going to add an adjustment layer here. And this is going to be the first of many. I'm going to rename this one to be grain. I'm going to bring it all the way to the top of here. And I want to add an add grain effect to this. So under these presets, I like to go with the Kodak vision. And set your viewing mode to be final output. So this is really subtle, but it's just going to give us a little bit of grain on our image. So that not everything looks so perfect. Next thing I want to do is create a new adjustment layer once again. And this one's going to be blur. And what I see a lot of people do when they do blurs is they do an ellipse. But I'm going to show you an effect that just makes it look a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and put the camera lens blur on this. And I think 5 is good, but let's maybe go up to something like 8. So instead of blurring out in an ellipse, what you want to do is actually blur in a rectangle like this. And then obviously we're going to make this sensitive jack mask. And just go ahead and bring up the feather on this so it's not so harsh. And you can see this gives you a little bit of a better effect than blurring all of the edges. You're just blurring the top and the bottom. Okay, so at the very top of here, I'm going to go ahead and add a vignette. And I don't want this to be so harsh, I'm just going to make it very subtle. And I'm also going to add chromatic aberrations. And on those chromatic aberrations, I'm going to set it to something like 100.5. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. So what I see people do wrong all the time is they don't actually attach their texture to the map comp. So when they move around, you can actually see the texture moves under it. And I'll show you what I mean if we watch this back. So you can see our map is moving under our texture and our texture doesn't look stuck to it. It's a little bit hard to see with this texture, but if you have some other textures, it's very noticeable. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. So you want to come out of your map comp and I'm just going to go ahead and finalize a frame just so we actually get our edges back here. And on your most zoomed in section of the map comp, you want to take your texture and parent it to your map comp anchor. So now we can come all the way back out and you'll notice our texture is only being applied in this one little small area. So the way we're going to fix that is by using a CC reptile effect. And this is usually the last step in your workflow because it's pretty intensive on your memory and your processor. But you want to expand everything just so it's taking up the entire screen. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to a quarter resolution and just bring these values up. Okay, so I've set mine now and 
some of these textures are gonna have hard borders so you could just bring up this blend with borders uh, but for mine it's actually made to repeat so we're not gonna get any harsh edges but if you do just bring up your blend borders and i actually just noticed one thing we forgot to parent this to our map comp so i'm gonna come back in here and i'm just gonna take these moving dots and parent it to our map comp anchor so it should move all together now and our texture is looking pretty good with our map comp now too so when you're done with your map comp another thing you could do is come into your map comp settings and you can just turn on Emoji Motion Blur, and it's gonna make your zoom ins look a lot nicer. So go ahead and hit Apply that. And before you render this out, go ahead and hit Finalize, and that's gonna give you high quality map comp images for everything. If you wanna level up your editing skills even more, click here.